inconspicuous pile of the roofing material eat tonight. It's nothing. Someone just left some roofing material slanted against an old shack. Because it's nice and orderly, well-laid pallets, easy on the eyes. Rhythmic pattern calms your mind. Mammals like this stuff. No, there's more to this. You get this strange feeling. Hard to say. It's gone now. Feelings pass, you see. Especially the small ones. There must be another way into the building. This must be it. The basement door is weather-worn. The copper nails holding the upholstery in place have turned green from sea air, and there's a knocker shaped like a lion's head. You try to be as silent as you can. It takes a bit of rattling of the handle to loosen the bolt. Finally, the door unlocks with a small clack. Thoughts race through your head. Well, buddy, you opened it. No need to go inside. It would be rude. Only curiosity could account for stepping over that threshold. Maybe there's treasure in there. A white alligator. A fountain of quicksilver. of mugs sits on the shelf. Each one depicts a human figure. A dark-skinned woman grinning amidst mysterious symbols. A broad-shouldered man shoveling potatoes and others. A little ring. Though cheerful, the images on the ceramic make you vaguely uncomfortable. There's something disdainful in the way the curves and lines of the bodies were drawn. The images betray a lack of interest in human beings. They are merely unflattering caricatures. 
The owner of these mugs doesn't like people of other ethnicities very much. This person is unhappy. The lieutenant picks up one of the mugs, then puts it back down with a look of disdain. I'm beginning to feel better about breaking into this man's apartment. Yes, your broken mug friend would feel very much at home here. The same humor, the same mocking lines. There's the missing tin soldier. Whoever lives here might have used the whirling's container to dump his trash. And now they've drawn the ire of the Union. The plot thickens, as they say. An interesting little clue. Let's see where this goes. Clues have a way of magically connecting to other clues down the road. Perhaps you should break into apartments more often. Who knows? I'm not expecting too much from this close in the trash lead either way. It might turn out to be some random local matter, but still, a nice coincidence. This is the flag of Rivershaw, the suzerainty. This isn't just one sun, but there are little suns dancing around the big sun. This is the sevenfold sun miracle. It's an optical atmospheric anomaly the first settlers saw. Happens in cold weather. Six small suns around the big one. This complex halo phenomena is how old Rivershaw got its flag. It is but one of the many strange optic atmospheric phenomena of this wondrous archipelago. You're sure you once saw sun dogs in your youth and blue flares. Mm-hmm. The tenant is an old-fashioned guy. The flag doesn't seem to mind. It's just a colorful fabric with a sun sewn onto it. Like all feudal flags, it looks like a children's drawing. see a young man on a balcony nursing a cigarette. His eyes have been following you for a while. Not looking for any trouble, officer. I don't want to be seen talking to the gendarmerie if that's okay. I just want to finish my cigarette. Don't let him go. This could be your witness. The balcony has a great view of the whole thing. Is it really that important? Like a nervous cat, he keeps stealing looks at the neighboring windows. All right, but make it quick. Once I finish this cigarette, I have to run. My name? My name is Martin Martinez. Martin Martinez? Good local name. Let's go with that. I can tell that you finally got him down. Thank you. It was quite a disturbing sight, even by Martinez's standards. 
What were you doing last Sunday? Oh. You already asked me that, didn't you? Wait. Is someone else investigating the lynching? No, not you. Some more muscular type. And when did you speak to this more muscular gentleman? Last week? I don't know. Look. It'll take more than rain to bring this place back to life. You didn't answer the question. What were you doing last Sunday? <sighs> I had a friend over. It was my Sunday friend. A Sunday friend? How intriguing. Makes sense. Friends are nice on Sunday. You don't have to work. You can just spend time with pals, watching rugby and drinking beer. He doesn't reply, gesturing no with his cigarette. Under the dull and darkening sky, the neighboring windows stand silent. No. We won't. Now, if you'll excuse me, I really need to get going. This isn't the place or time for questions. Who knows who might be watching from the distance, hidden behind the curtains? For a moment, the man on the balcony seems almost vulnerable. Something moves in the depths of his feline eyes, compassion, and a hint of understanding. I am sorry, but I really don't have the information you're looking for. But, hold on, what's that? For a split second, his hand lingers, as though gesturing towards a stone placed right next to the front door. It's a sign. Good luck with the investigation. He's gone. No point in running. Tenements like these often have multiple exits. If he doesn't want to talk to us, then he'll know how to hide himself. He could be a witness. Him or his Sunday friend. Either way, we need to look into that muscular type who's asking about our case. He did leave us a sign. Did you see that? He wanted to draw our attention to that stone right over there. If we find a way inside the building, we can ask around for his apartment. A stone, like any other, lying in a whirl of sleet and mud. Maybe there's something under it. There's a key beneath it, rusty from the dirt. This must be for the front door. Pity doesn't have the apartment number on it. This building has many apartments and a man can be in any of them. We'll just have to go in and see.
This door has been closed with a padlock. A chalk drawn number on the board says, number 11. No reply. It's a solid lump of metal, but the shackle is deeply corroded. A solid pair of chain cutters would make short work of it. Better whip out those cutters. You won't get very far otherwise. This door has been closed with a padlock. A chalk drawn number on the board says, number 11. What are you doing? You're trying to cut the body of the lock with the chain cutters and it's really not working. I believe it's the shackle you mean to cut, detective. He's just trying to help. Don't take it. Bad. Relax. Perhaps you should give it another go. The shackle snaps like a twig and the lock falls to the floor with a little thud. It should be possible to enter now. After you, detective. A plaster cast bust depicts a middle-aged man with impressive sideburns. The name on the plinth reads Kras Mazov. The White Star, the photos on the wall. I think we have broken into the apartment of a young communard. How fitting. You hear someone walking around inside, rearranging the furniture. The number on the panel says 10. The walking stops abruptly, but no one comes to the door. You can feel tension on the other side. A poor communard from the looks of it. The room is barely bigger than a closet. Do I have to open the door? Do you have a warrant? I'm not obligated to open the door if you don't have a warrant. Let's go. We don't have a reason to get inside that apartment. It's generally easier to do things if you have literally any reason. A poor communard from the looks of it. The room is barely bigger than a closet. Do I have to? Do you have a warrant? Let's go. It's gen. Give me a moment. The cold never does any good for my bronchitis. <laughs> I'm fine. Fine. Don't you worry about me. <laughs> You're still worried. It's very worrying. Now, what do you want from me, policeman? She's the cleaning lady. She knows the floor plan and the residence. Oh, you'll find plenty of Martins here. Don't you worry. Pea brain. Someone played a trick on you. Martin Martinez is a name for anyone who comes from Martinez. Like Jim Jambrock or Raoul Ravagel. Oops. You really didn't get the joke there. I thought it was obvious. Anyway, officer, we don't have the witness's name. Yes, yes. I know who you mean. The scrawny boy who's always smoking like the devil, right? Somewhere in the building, a child starts crying. You hear a radio tuned to a talk show and someone taking a shower. What's he in trouble for? Talk? He 
lives upstairs in room 28. Go to the balcony. It's one of those doors there. He's usually home in... Thank you. We should go check out his apartment on the balcony. See if he's home. I'm no one. Just an old woman who cleans these hallways. If you can call it living. I have a little room upstairs right next to the coal room. It's barely bigger than a closet. But I don't complain, no. I have my bed and my aching bones to keep me company. And that's all I need from this world. Ask away, policeman. People come and go. I don't keep an eye on everyone. They probably just moved or died. Hopefully somewhere else. No one lives there. It's been empty for months. Impossible. I would know if someone had moved in there. Maybe it's those countercultural people again. Breaking into a house like it's a public space. You're a policeman. Be good and take a look, will you? Great. Young people. They're worse than rats. You know, always littering the hallways with trinkets and empty beer cans. Oh, that one is a scientist. A future scholar. I think he studies astrology at the community college. Education's good. I always tell them to study. Something to do with all those stars around his door. He asked me to leave his drawings up on the wall. A symbol of what now? The cleaning lady shrugs and returns to sweeping. She mumbles some kind of a response. Then... You hear someone walking around inside. Re Excuse me? Of course not. There's no sweet talking your way in there. Be official. You have plenty of reason to enter. Oh, come on! That was smart. Satisfied? My name is Marielle Charpentier and I'm an agent with Martinez Realty Associates. I am not breaking in as I have every right to be here. The keys, see? Her voice is really cheerful, despite her obviously hating you. Do you want to see my ID as well? You can't legally ask for it, but why not? Want to see my residence permit too? Very well, but please make it quick. I need to be back in La Delta in an hour. Oh, that's another huge mess. The former tenant owes us three months of rent. Three. We closed the apartment and planned on auctioning off the valuables, but... And again, I have no idea how stupid mistakes like this can even happen. But Ron, when he came to close the door, didn't close the neighboring door. And there's a hole in the wall. A hole in the wall. Can you believe it? And then the tenant ran off with his stuff. He's gone. The money's gone. Just like that. The sum must have been puny. Oh, it irks her. The incompetence. Well, it does not disappear from my hands. No, I don't let it. These apartments are perfectly fine. They have gorgeous architecture, a million real view of the bay, good ventilation, neighbors, life, spark, and they are affordable. 
I'll tell you, Martinez has a future. In a few years, it's going to blossom with artists and creatives and those radio computer wizards. It's as if they're real wizards, able to resurrect dead real estate and breathe life into bank accounts. Don't ask me what happened with the wall. I have no idea how we're going to find the time or resources to fix it. Both apartments are now unrentable. Both. I need to get it ready for the next lease, but as you can see, the previous tenant completely trashed the place. Ha! Huh. Sounds like you've spent too much time undercover in some rock band. It was some kind of a moribund old man who used to be a business owner. You'd think they'd make rent. But that was months ago. Anyway, was there anything you wanted or is that it? I'm in a hurry. It is. Everyone says the real estate agents don't do anything. But here I am in the middle of the night cleaning up someone's crash pad. So, the sooner we get this over with, the better. Of course. We should think about calling it today, maybe. The nights are still miserably cold this time of year. You should take care of that, then. Let's talk to him anyway. An officer of the RCM shouldn't be sleeping in the street. We'll figure something out. Though he finds this situation frustrating, he is doing his best to not make you feel any worse than you already do. Give me a moment. I see. I hope some good people are finally going to move in. This place needs them. Yes. Well. <clears throat> I hope they're good people. Your statements are too vague to comment on. What's this? We're getting reports of normal, reasonable, temperate, political opinions somewhere in Martinez. It's also about that, but it's also more. Perhaps it's the hangover. Perhaps it's a temporary surge of serotonin, but something tells you it's time to become a citizen of the Kingdom of Conscience. It is not a place. It is a moment in time that can only arise in the right circumstances. In all of human history, it's only been achieved a handful of times. Incrementally. Yawn. You'd get there faster with a little speed. History's greatest catastrophes have been brought about by people trying to make the world a better place too quickly. That's the genius of Dolores Day. 
She recognized that progress is meaningless if its gains are lost because of instability. Real, lasting change can only come about gradually, increment by increment. The kingdom is difficult to comprehend and even more difficult to describe, partly because humanity will need to discard many of the categories that define and limit it today. The kingdom of conscience is post-capitalist, post-national. It's also post-industrial, post-ideological, and even post-sexual. Slow down, Mr. Reasonable. Did you miss the part about compromising and taking things slow? That's right. Remember, real democracy is just around the corner for Revershaw. When that real democracy kicks in, a long time from now, we are all going to be so much happier. That isn't just a five-pointed star. It's an inverted white pentagram cradled in a wreath of antlers, the iconography of communism, in other words. I'll keep my armistice handy, detective. He doesn't actually reach for his gun. The star and antlers was developed in the sixth decade of the last century and quickly adopted by Mezov and the communards during the revolution. Even today, half a century after, the star and antlers retains the ability to evoke hope, disappointment, and fear in equal measure. To symbolize the toppling of the old order, also some social democrats were already using it, because white is the color of peace. You see noble aims, but also mountains upon mountains of corpses. They should have taken a more measured approach. Also, you're really smart. This door is made of metal and appears to be reinforced. Someone here really values their security. Number 28. This is where the cleaning lady said the smoker on the balcony lives. Let's see if anyone's home. No one answers. Looks like the young man we are looking for isn't home. I think our best chance to catch him is in the evening. We should return tomorrow after we have finished with our day's work. How about 9 p.m.? Sound good? Tomorrow, 9 p.m., right here. Apartment number 28. Good, let's go. Damn. Turns out it's quite tricky finding someone in a big apartment building. Don't worry. You'll get him. Remember, tomorrow. He's probably gone for today.
Hello again, sweetie. I hope you're able to pawn that old trinket. Oh, thank you, dear. I confess I am glad to see it again. Even the lieutenant seems happy with this turn of events. Now, what else, sweetie? Can I help you? Yes, have you got it? Does that arrangement include you paying me what we already agreed you owe me? I understand your predicament as the manager. However, I feel I must remind you that we are here to conduct an important investigation that also affects your business. Forgive me for saying this, but your colleague seems more committed to drinking, and... He shrinks back a bit under the lieutenant's severe gaze. I mean no offense. It's really nothing personal. I just have to protect the interests of this establishment. Good luck trying to use it. All the locks have an electronic component. They have to be unlocked down here with a master key before your guest key will open the lock. Not until you bring me the money. Okay. I might have something in my motor carriage we can use when you're done here. I really didn't want to resort to this. The man is thinking. Oh, Lieutenant, we're done here. What thing? Yes, not the whole damn union, thank God. Just the nastiest and loudest faction. They come here in the evenings, dumb, unruly types. Think they're big shit. But they're good customers. They place big orders and always pay on time. He hates the Union, but grudgingly recognizes its power over him. So he's directing his frustration at you instead. Retaliate. I don't. I'm simply providing a service, or really facilitating the offering of services to paying customers and... It doesn't matter. I don't have to explain myself to you. We should find out who this Lord Faction is occupying the booth. Lordness means talkative, and we need info. We don't. We have to wait. They'll show up sooner or later. Men get hungry, even men on strike. You glance at the clock on the wall behind the manager. Huh. Good question. They're probably getting drunk or protesting something somewhere or laying low after the, you know, lynching. Whatever he may feel about you, he can't miss the opportunity to throw you a look of what he assumes is sheer understanding. Go with it. Yeah, yeah. The Union guys think they're untouchable. They probably fucking killed that guy or something and now think they can hide out till it all blows over and it's fair weather again in Martinez. Hmm. I have a feeling we'll make their acquaintance sooner or later. What? By the way, you should come back to this thing-based questionnaire if you see anything interesting in the whirling later. steel door with a prominent dimple lock. It's painted blue. You immediately feel drawn to the color. Blue is for mystery. The door does not budge. You do? It's a door in the back of the kitchen. Why do you care where it leads?
Hmm. Yes. I suppose it's worth seeing if we can get in. Just to be thorough. As a side investigation. Gart is the person to ask about this. The cafeteria manager. Can I help you? Another thing. Great. I love the... Oh, yes, that door, sure. There's nothing mysterious about it. It's just a door. No, I don't have a key. I don't know how to get there. And I don't care either. It's not like I've been wondering about it for ten years. It's just the frit warehouse, probably. Or some boring storage space with a bunch of old junk and dust. Junk and dust. He's attempting to maintain an air of indifference. It's absolutely not convincing. Fine, okay, a little. But my job doesn't leave me time for wondering about one locked door in one of the cafeterias I manage. So I haven't opened it. I have cleaned the whole place a hundred times over, though, after the animals. And I haven't found a key, so good luck with that. Yes? Inside, you see a set of steering levers, a radio microphone, a pull-out toolbox, and the soft glow of the fuel preheater gauge. I have something here we could sell. Look in the back, in the suspect transport enclosure. Transport enclosure? Regular people just call it the cage. The cage at the back of the motor carriage looks rather uncomfortable. Four shiny hubcaps are stacked against the seat. The silver edges sparkle in the dark. I confiscated these four a little while back. We can take them to the pawn shop down by the Martinez Canal. The lieutenant nods as you take the spinners. <laughs> 